Hello and welcome to our Reboot Review. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this week we're discussing the episode Game Over. This episode originally aired September 10th, 1997 here in Canada. Uh, Let us start off with number one film at the box office that week. So here's hoping it's something different than it was from last week, or are we still kind of on the uh, important... uh, movies talking about social issues um it's a different film it's a film that was much better received um and i have to assume i'm going to assume just based off the director it's a much better film Mm. Mm. because this movie has a director you've heard of yeah i'm gonna be surprised but uh, again, around that time doesn't immediately call too much with it. Also, the case of with the things that happened with this episode kind of taking over the mind space of, oh gosh, this is the thing. This is the thing. So, uh, I'll just give it to you because you're not, I don't think you've ever heard of this film. Um, it's a David Fincher film called The Game. Like it's there. But then, of course, there's about the 3,527 other things that are most likely used that in some sort of respect. Yeah, it's a Michael Douglas and Sean Penn movie. And, like, it, it's probably quite good. It got pretty good reviews, like 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it is probably a pretty good movie. Interesting. Like, is there anything additional with the premise of what sort of thing it dives Um... into? Uh, For a free game offered by... uh... So it sounds like this rich dude has um, lunch with his brother, who's estranged, and gives him a voucher for a game. He goes to this office to apply. Uh, gets irritated because they want him to do a bunch of psychological and physical examinations. Um, and then... Uh, somehow wakes up entombed in a cemetery in Mexico. That is a game, supposedly. Apparently. Anyway, uh, let us move on to the number one song in America. Again, safest bet would probably be saying that it was still the one from last week, but supposedly here's hoping it's something new. It is something new, but it is not a new... Well, it's... Not the same artist we had last time, but it's definitely an artist who's been in the top spot before. Uh, is it Mariah Carey again? It is. (laughs) Uh, As for a song, I'm not sure from her uh, labels what it would supposedly be. Uh, It's a song called Honey. Yeah, that tracks, along with the 3,527 other particular songs related to Honey. Alrighty, let us move on to video games. Ooh, what's released with these particular things? Uh, there's only two. Um, so if you had a Saturn or later a PlayStation 1, it would come out in 98 on PS1. Uh, you could pick up a little game called uh, Silhouette Mirage, which I'm not familiar with. Um, yeah, I've got nothing. It's like a 2D action side-scroller, so... Yeah. I you mean never, that that was big at the time. Games. Uh, also, on September 11th, if you had a PlayStation One, you could pick up a little game called Breath of Fire Three. Uh, yes. No of the series, but never had the chance to play through any of them. Yeah, I know the name, but like I've never played any of them because they're like RPGs, and I don't really do RPGs. You know, unless it actually kind of hooks you in within the first couple of minutes, which it can only do within the first couple of hours. I, I'm trying to think of the last time I played like a traditional RPG, and I can't think of it. Oh, um, no, I tell a lie. Fairly recently, actually, because I started playing the um, Super Mario RPG remake. Ah, uh, yes. But aside from that, I couldn't tell you prior to that what the last one was. Yeah, understandable. Alrighty, so let's move on to the game. Okay. Yeah. 
I just want to talk about the game in this one. Because <laughs> it's Mortal Kombat. Yeah, traditional fighting style game. Again, it takes points and references from a couple of uh, interesting fighting games at the time, but mostly referencing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, definitely. And it, like, it has the the same style of music. It has a lot of... The character designs are very similar. Like, it's pretty clearly spoofing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so that is quite a bit of fun. But, um, so at the beginning of the episode, we have the threat of Megabyte and Hexadecimal. Maybe is it gone, but it's definitely diminished. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main framers can uh, focus their energies on finding Bob. However, the user brings down a deadly combat game, not Mortal Kombat at all, and the odds are against Enzo because the user only has to beat five characters, but there's 12 to choose from, and between him and Andrea, there's obviously only two of them, so the user could technically win the game without ever having to fight one of them. Yeah, that's definitely a bit of a trick, uh, going with the story from there. Yes, so I quite enjoyed this the sequences in the game um, because they were fun and dumb. But uh, is there any important plot stuff in this episode? Because you would know better than I would because I'm not overly familiar with this point of the series. Well, along with the story, yes, Megabyte's uh, threats to the system has been diminished, trapped inside of the firewall. Can't really do as much as he'd supposedly want to. He can still technically escape, Hexadecimal is strong enough to poke a hole in the shield, allowing some of his forces to kind of go out, supposedly cause trouble, but Mainframe's smart enough to get everything together and take care of the threat that attacks him. And sadly, we had the loss of the general character of Megabyte's army uh, destroyed by slamming into the firewall that closes behind him. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember that part. Yes. So sad. So sad. Yeah, pour um, one out for that dude. Yes. Um, but it brings up a particular line, a discussion that Megabyte and Hexadecimal kind of have uh, while she does her thing, uh, poking a hole through the firewall, of, you honestly think that you're, you'll are you be able to control me just with this collar? Once I get this off, you'll be in a world of trouble. Chaos can never be controlled, can never be ordered around by control. It is the way of things. It just like E Hexadecimal's character, despite being incarcerated and used as a tool, still has the or interesting bits to her character. And it's just like, oh, 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 when the penny drops, when she gets out, all oh, hell's going to break loose, and it's gonna be glorious. Okay, is it? I think it's this episode where I I forget which sprite it is, but one of them says some like something to the effect of like, I think Hexadecimal likes being tied up. Uh, the doctor that stays with uh, Megabyte. Just the fact that Megabyte sort of asks, how is everything with containing hexadecimal and whatnot? Honestly, with the numbers that we've run, it's surprising that we even managed to do it at all. It almost makes you think that she's doing this on purpose. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that he explicitly says, like, I think she likes being tied up or something. And I was like, wow, that is... And Megabyte kind of agrees with, oh god, <laughs> let's not even think of that. And I was like, I'm kind of surprised that they were allowed to say that on a kid's show, but, you know. <laughs> Snuck by the censors. Um, going back more over with the Megabyte, or with the mainframe crew, there is the success of the plan of stopping an attack from Megabyte outside of the firewall, and concerns with then, but also kind of the case of Dot's been doing a decent enough job kind of can keeping control of the situation, but you get to see behind the mask a little bit, and she's not over the fact that Bob's gone, all this shit is happening, and her brother is jumping into games, risking his life defending the system and whatnot, so a bit of character-building moments of Dot working through all of the particular troubles that are around. Yes. Um, and obviously at the end of the episode, Enzo ends up losing the game and 
they are concerned that Enzo may be dead, da da da, because like when you lose the game, the, there's like an entire chunk of the system that gets like bloated up. Yeah, yeah. Though if you're not, if you're careful watching or keep an eye on things, you notice uh, Enzo, Andrea, and with Andrea to frisk it, do a little something to their icons before things uh, go along, and won't go too much into it because it's saving and on an idea that they're gonna mess around with a little bit more yeah they they tap the icon and it becomes like a triangle but we don't know what that does uh depending on if you kind of know things within the series or kind of paid attention to past episodes okay well i don't know what it does <laughs> But I'm assuming I it's a deus ex machina. I didn't uh, look too much into it, but the voice actor for Dot, especially at her ending uh, lines and whatnot, definitely hit the point of, oh man, if she was at the breaking point, this just pushed it over the cliff. Yes, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, this is another episode that I've, I've quite enjoyed. And it's another marvelous case of after Bob gets shot up into the web, well, goodbye to the previous tone of the episode. Here's the new normal. Well, here's, well, that new normal's <laughs> done its due. Out with the old, in with the next thing. And oh man, there's going to be the edge. Yes, so we have to find out in the next episode what happened to, to uh, Enzo. Man, what's going to be happening to Mainframe? Yes. Well, because if Enzo's gone, then they don't have a guardian, and that would be a very bad situation. Like, oh, McGee. Oh, my God. Oh, righty. So is there anything else about this episode you wanted to bring up? I think on whole with this episode, just the concern of the, oh, man. Like, if it wasn't bad enough that we kind of lost the <coughs> main hero character and whatnot, we're losing secondary like it's still that gun punch of oh man nothing seems to be sort of safe in certain cases and how bad is this supposedly going to get and just the case of despite the fact that the series is going so fast with just watching the episodes back to back and whatnot even with a supposed time frame of when the episodes were kind of coming out how it was sort of going along with the series God, how much of a gut punch it was still for kids of or us for around that time for seeing this sort of stuff happen. Like the only other thing I could supposedly think of would be some of the Buffy episodes, but that was starting to head more into the later seasons that it was just gut punch after gut punch after gut punch. <laughs> yeah. Although they were they're not far off in terms of when they aired. Because Buffy starts in 97, so it's around oh. the time that these episodes are airing is when Buffy's starting. Okay. It's but, one of those interesting sort of things that everyone seems to kind of go through and they're, oh man, everything needs to be super serious and have the concerns and whatnot so much, so much urge! Just like us sitting here now seeing those sort of things happen just like ah, i remember when that happened for us and how it's <laughs> happening for the people nowadays uh yeah anyway uh next week we'll be discussing the episode icons uh i'm a little surprised that bob hasn't come back so maybe in the next few episodes he will um but yeah so if this is a direct follow-up to the previous episode, so I don't really want to give away too much of of what's going to happen. It's honestly one of the cases of... I think it's the case that the better... or the, least, the less you talk about heading into the next episode, possibly for the better. Because again, when I say that they completely throw the tone out the window, essentially more so than it was with Bob being shot into the web. Yeah, yeah. So we will see what happens next time. Until then, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. <laughs>